Get your special sock out, nerds. It's gonna get good. Your little cinematic universe is about to change forever. Deadpool and a Wolverine. This just feels right. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Maximum effort. They released a couple other Deadpool 3 trailers with some alternate footage, so we'll break it all down. A lot of you also had some questions about stuff that was in the trailer, so we'll try to clarify that during this video. A lot of people, a lot of people now looking out for Doctor Doom and other X-Men characters, other Fantastic Four characters in the background, too. There's a lot of stuff that they did not show in this first trailer. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. This is just the beginning. Like, they're just starting their marketing campaign. This is going to be crazy for the rest of this year to the summer when it comes out. I cannot wait to see what kind of crazy, unhinged promos they wind up releasing. Deadpool marketing campaigns are usually peak. This is probably going to be Marvel's first billion dollar movie since Spider-Man No Way Home. And big coincidence, maybe no coincidence, this is the eight year anniversary today as of me posting this video of the release of the first Deadpool movie, which was a Valentine's Day release if you don't remember. Taking things back to that pegging joke, in fact, speaking of which, they just released another alternate international trailer with some different footage. The thing that they changed out, or one of the things they changed out, was the pegging joke itself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that supposed to be scary? The R rating isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. They basically replaced the Disney joke with an R rating. There's another instance of him breaking the fourth wall at the beginning of this other trailer where he says, nerds, grab your special sock because it's going to get good. Most people probably understand what that means, special sock. Not sure if that's just a line for the trailer or if that's a line that's going to wind up in the actual theatrical cut of the movie and he is breaking the fourth wall or he's talking to someone else in the scene when he says that. There's another brand new scene where we actually see that the TVA has a suit maker who makes everybody's super suits. It's a totally new character that we didn't meet during the Loki series. There's all kinds of fabric behind him on the table, stuff on the walls. He's the guy with the white gloves that's helping Deadpool during that suit up montage and the one that grabs his crotch and slaps his butt. There are a couple of people in the comments I saw that were just confused about who it was that was wearing the white gloves in that last trailer. This just confirms that. I suppose you could also look at the white gloves as another Disney Mickey Mouse reference, like Mickey Mouse Disney controls Deadpool, owns Deadpool now. We get a much better shot of Wolverine in his yellow suit, but he's still blurry. It's as he's walking up to Deadpool while he's lying on the ground. This is what he looks like without the mask on. He's supposed to get the mask during the movie, though. Like, at some point, he will wear it. This is what it's supposed to look like. Maybe, maybe he'll get his sleeves ripped off at some point during the movie, so he'll be even more comic book accurate. This is based more on the costume from Astonishing X-Men, though, even though it looks like X-Men the Animated Series. That's kind of the vibe that they're going for, though. There was a relatively practical reason he was actually wearing sleeves on set. Normally, they would do him without the sleeves, but he actually had a skin cancer scare in real life just a little while ago. So Ryan Reynolds, the people making the movie, didn't want Hugh Jackman to have to walk around without sleeves on at risk of skin cancer while they were filming outside because a lot of the movie was filmed outside. So what they probably do is they just wait until they were indoors, and at some point, there's some scene where he gets his sleeves ripped off. Deadpool and Wolverine. This just feels right. Then he breaks the fourth wall again, turns to camera saying, this just feels right. Just before Wolverine attacks him in this scene here, he flies through the 20th Century Fox logo, and they battle it out before they agree to team up. Like Wolverine and Deadpool fighting each other until Wolverine just gets tired because they both have healing factors. Theoretically, the fight would just keep going on forever because they keep healing the damage. Then another literal and metaphorical blink and you'll miss it super quick fourth wall break when the Deadpool logo itself winks at camera like winking from behind the camera at the audience. And a couple more references to Deadpool talking about changing the Marvel Cinematic Universe, your cinematic universe, quote unquote. Your little cinematic universe is about to change forever. I think all the Marvel Jesus references that he makes during that is a bit of a wink at the audience, too. Like, not a literal fourth wall break because he doesn't turn to camera in that scene, at least as far as we can tell in the trailer. More of a reference to Deadpool clowning on all the Marvel movies like people expect him to because the last couple years of Marvel, people have been very dissatisfied with some of the movies. Like, some have done well and some have done really poorly and some of the series have done really poorly. 
Generally, Deadpool is sort of like a mouthpiece for the fans to call stuff out. Like, he calls stuff out for the fans, speaking for the fans, breaking the fourth wall in moments like this. But Marvel also uses Deadpool to clown on itself, so they're also kind of clowning on themselves when they're doing this. You think the studio would throw us a bone? One that doesn't end up in my mouth. The first movie made more money than the guy who invented pants. Okay, they can't just dust off one of the famous X, but how about that Potts with the giant pigeon wings? What do those do anyway, huh? Carry him three feet off the ground to snatch up the nearest muffin crumb? Why the holidays? Thought it'd be fun. Why PG-13? It's a family movie, also money, also Disney. Used to be he just made fun of the X-Men movies because he was at Fox. Now he's making fun of Disney because he's at Disney. The funny thing about all the Disney jokes in the trailer, especially like the pegging joke, is that he said that when they were making Deadpool 2, the Fox people actually wouldn't let them make some of the Disney jokes that they had in the movie, so they had to take them out because the Fox Disney buyout was still in the process, like it hadn't completed yet. And the business people at Fox were so afraid of something tanking the deal or causing it to go south that they didn't want Deadpool making that many Disney references, and he didn't really make that many in the actual R-rated cut of the film. There were a couple of Disney jokes that he worked in when they were promoting Once Upon a Deadpool, the PG-13 cut of Deadpool, like he was making Disney jokes that it would have to be PG-13 because they were at Disney now. But even though during the full trailer they just said that the movie was still unrated, technically it is supposed to be rated R, so like it will still be fully rated R, and if you look at the trailer it is kind of a red band themed trailer. Going a little deeper on the trailer too, a lot of you asking now how is Shatterstar still alive after dying in Deadpool 2? Where is Domino? Where is Cable? What happened to everybody at the end of Deadpool 2? Is this like an alternate universe from the one that we saw at the end of Deadpool 2? Josh Brolin's Cable probably isn't in the movie, mostly because he was busy filming Dune 2, and they're filming Dune 3 probably pretty soon. Kevin Feige said that he didn't have any problems with Josh Brolin coming back in the MCU as Cable, though like there weren't any issues with him having played Thanos so much, even though Josh Brolin just said he thinks that Thanos is coming back in the future movies. Zip it, Thanos, we have a deal and you fuck ah! But I don't expect Cable in this movie, only the repercussions of Deadpool using his time travel device to create a bunch of Nexus events with all those changes he made. And what they'll probably do is they'll probably say that he also made some more changes that we didn't see on screen. That might be how Shatterstar is still alive, like he probably used Cable's time travel device to go back in time and save him before he dies. Maybe he made a few more changes and then eventually came back to Vanessa. A lot of people confused about Vanessa too, like, wait a minute, didn't she die? He actually saved her at the very beginning of the Deadpool 2 post credit scene. Maybe people just skipped the post credit scene or something like that or they just missed that part of the movie. A lot of people also asking if we're going to see the copycat version of Vanessa from the comics who does have superpowers, like she is a mutant in the comics. As far as we know, the one that we've seen in Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2 is not a mutant, she's just like a normal human. Marina Baccarin did hint that we might see some Vanessa variants during the movie, so if we see Vanessa copycat, it would be like a variant of the character that we see in The Void or something like that, or some other universe that he travels to. Now that we've had the time to watch the trailer like 10, 20 more times, if you look around the birthday scene in his apartment here, there are a couple Easter eggs in the background. This might be a Doctor Doom mask on the top shelf next to the Deadpool plushie. There are a bunch of Doctor Doom references later in the trailer, so it wouldn't be a big surprise. But this also shows that he has real life merchandise toys based on his character. On the shelf below him, this actually looks kind of like a Spider-Man Funko Pop. There was a Spider-Man joke that he made during one of the Deadpool 2 trailers a couple years ago too when that movie was released. Phone it in. Listen, this thing only goes to 11. So beat it, Spider-Man. God, I should have asked NSYNC. She thinks I'm Spider-Man. Anyway. Probably one of the downer Easter eggs, too, that I think a lot of people missed is when he says it's been a rough couple of years and you see the scene of him and Vanessa at the table seeming really sad. What probably happened is they probably lost their baby, Cher, because it was a reference to Deadpool naming the baby Cher at the end of Deadpool, too. Like, Vanessa was pregnant, they were going to have a child together. Their rough couple of years probably means that Cher died somehow. When the TVA arrests him and takes him back through their portal and they rip the toupee off his head, you notice that he's stapled the toupee to his head. And a lot of people have asked throughout the trailer why the TVA agents look a little bit different from the TVA agents that we saw in Loki. This could actually be a subplot during the movie. Like, people are like, wait a minute, is this a different TVA? Like, are these different characters entirely, like a different organization than the one that we saw on Loki? 
generally the movie is meant to take place after the events of the Loki series, what might be happening here is it could just be as simple as a different creative team working on the movie, just putting their own spin on the characters. But if you think about it, the TVA is supposed to be vast, like it is enormous. So it wouldn't be a surprise if some of the hunters looked a little bit different from the hunters that we saw in the Loki series. But yes, there might be some plot during the movie where something shady is happening at the TVA because he does attack all the other hunters. Like, why would he attack them if something doesn't go completely off the rails during the movie? I've got a couple theories about that, but it all goes down in the woods here. In the woods scenes, looks like it's going to be a reference to Avengers Age of Ultron when they were fighting in the woods during that movie, and also probably why they were playing those scenes in the TVA monitors when he was learning about becoming a TVA agent. Basically, Matthew McFadden's Paradox character wants to turn Deadpool, who is a variant now because of what he's done, like he's created a bunch of Nexus events, so he's a variant just like Loki was. And just like Mobius did with Loki, he basically gives him the option of either being pruned and sent to the void or becoming another TVA agent. But it seems like what happens is the TVA sends him to a bunch of different realities. Like when he goes to see the patch version of Wolverine, that's one of the missions that they send him on. When they sent him to the events of Avengers Age of Ultron here in the woods, that's another mission that they send him on. Maybe there's like a montage of funny missions where he goes to a bunch of different universes, but at some point during one of these missions, that's where things go off the rails. You notice inside the minivan though, there are three claw marks for a version of Wolverine. So it seems like they're going after a version of Wolverine at some point during this scene, but it's still not totally clear why he then kills all the TVA hunter characters. Maybe they go rogue on him, or maybe they try to do something that he's not down with. Like maybe they're trying to kill these versions of Wolverine or prune them and he doesn't totally understand what's going on. Or maybe because Cassandra Nova is the main villain of the movie, she's actually mind controlling them, evil Professor X style. A lot of people also asking about the patch version of Wolverine. So this is another variant in the movie. There'll be a couple Wolverine variants, like I said, but this one is supposed to be played by a different actor. Maybe it'll be a reference to all the fan castings for the new Wolverine. So let me know who you think the other Wolverine is going to be in this scene. If you didn't read the classic Wolverine comics, the reason why everyone calls this Wolverine patch is because Larry Hama did a classic run in the 80s with Wolverine on Madripoor, and during that, the locals there knew him as Patch. That was one of the aliases that he used. His normal hangout there was the Princess Bar, which was featured during the Falcon and Winter Soldier episodes. Like, they traveled to Madripoor and they passed by the Princess Bar. So this whole casino scene might actually be happening on Madripoor, like it might just be Wolverine gambling at a casino there. A lot of people also wondering if that means that we'll see Gambit during this scene too, because we're supposed to see a version of Gambit during the movie. Maybe, we'll see. There are a couple other really big Easter eggs here too. So on top of the Secret Wars number no. 5 comic book is a Pingo Doce bottle with the Green Hulk blood soda from the Incredible Hulk movie. So maybe we'll see someone Hulk out in the movie or a version of the Hulk, but the Secret Wars comic book was pruned because we're on the Void planet here, meaning that there's a universe out there where a real-life Marvel comics exists and got pruned. That's actually something that they featured in previous Marvel movies and TV shows. Like, there have been real-life versions of Marvel comics out there that exist. There's even a version of Marvel comics that exists in the DC universe on the Flash TV show that gets referenced all the time. So you have to imagine that there was some person reading a Secret Wars number no. 5 comic book then turned into the Hulk that was probably drinking this Pingo Doce Hulk soda. The last person that we saw drinking that soda was Stan Lee. So maybe, maybe they're also trying to say that a version of Stan Lee got pruned when he was reading a Secret Wars comic drinking this soda and sent to the void. But I don't actually expect to see them digitally replace Stan Lee's face or anything like that in the movie. Like, I don't think Stan Lee himself is going to show up in the movie. But they might be trying to say that his version of that character from the end of the Incredible Hulk movie actually got sent here to the void as a variant. Like the Hulk version of Stan Lee. One of the other characters a lot of people think that you spotted is Lady Deadpool. She might be the one with the two Uzis here because that is her weapon in the comics. Deadpool himself doesn't traditionally use Uzis. And even though I haven't seen any other Easter eggs for like Aviation Gin or Ryan Reynolds real life brands, there is a Wrexham AFC reference during the movie too. During this scene where you see Deadpool at his normal job, like before he's gone with the TVA, like he got his suit hanging up in the blue locker here, there's actually a sticker for Knott's County, which is one of Wrexham's rivals from last season of football. So maybe they're trying to say that Deadpool is anti-Rexham. Like maybe that'll be a joke during the movie or maybe it's just a sly Rexham reference in the background. 
Recently, in real life, Ryan Reynolds actually had Kevin Feige out to Wrexham for an actual game. This is him taking pictures with everybody. Generally speaking, though, Cassandra Nova is meant to be the actual main villain of the movie, even though there might be some secret subplot with the TVA being kind of shady and doing bad things, even though technically they should be above board now based on what happened at the end of Loki Season 2. This movie is supposed to take place after that, but like I said, because there's like a completely different creative team working on some of these movies than some of the TV shows, sometimes there's always those small things that don't always line up perfectly. But it seems like the big final battle of the movie probably happens on the Void planet here. I think part of the idea and like part of the Secret Wars reference at the end of the trailer, in addition to being a bit of a Doctor Doom reference in them saying, hey, we're doing Avengers Secret Wars at some point in the whole meta of it all being a real life Secret Wars actual comic book is that Deadpool and Wolverine will find a way to actually stop Cassandra Nova because if she were successful, like if she actually did defeat everyone and rule the void, she'd probably try to find a way off the void and start conquering the multiverse because she is that powerful. She's basically meant to be the most evil version of Professor X. She's a relatively newer character from the recent new X-Men run in the early 2000s. That was Grant Morrison's run, so no surprise Deadpool would want to borrow from one of the comic book masters. It's a great run if you haven't read it. They even borrowed a little bit from that run for X-Men Dark Phoenix. The costumes that the X-Men team is wearing during that are from that new X-Men run. Her full name, though, is Cassandra Nova Xavier because Charles Xavier. And as you would expect from Grant Morrison, her backstory is totally nuts. Like, how did Professor X have a twin that we just learned about in the 2000s? He explained that because Professor X was born so powerful, his genetic potential was so great, when he was in his mother's womb growing, it caused the creation of a fraternal twin to form from the living embodiment of Professor X's anti-self, like this cosmic form that took shape because he was so powerful. They explained that the Shi'ar have this concept saying that each person has an opposite or an anti-form of themselves that exist cosmically out there in the universe, but usually it's just this formless cosmic energy that never takes shape, especially for people who aren't that powerful, like normal humans. But because Professor X was so powerful, even in his mother's womb, his anti-self was able to take form, sort of like latch on to him and use that to take form and become his fraternal twin later taking the name Cassandra Nova Xavier, and because they're fraternal twins in the comics, she looks exactly like him, just female. When they were growing in the womb, Professor X was so powerful that he unconsciously became aware of her, his evil anti-self, and tried to kill her with his mutant powers, like kill his twin in the womb. The event was so crazy, it caused his mother to suffer a miscarriage when she gave birth to both of them, and they believed that only Professor X survived the birth. But Cassandra Nova, having powers equal to that of Professor X, was able to survive as a lump of cells hiding in the walls of the building. Yes, this is right, Grant Morrison actually wrote this. Slowly creating a body for herself over decades until eventually she was able to emerge looking just like Professor X, but super evil, super pissed off, and looking for revenge against him. She became the main villain of that big Grant Morrison new X-Men run, and she goes about trying to destroy the X-Men, tearing down everything in Professor X's life, mostly succeeding. They weren't able to actually kill her. Ultimately, they could only contain her and wipe her memory. She just came back in the more recent comics, too, working with the Hellfire Club and the Marauders, trying to cause more trouble for the X-Men. Professor X just create more havoc in general. Eventually, that group, the Marauders she was working with, tried to trap her in the past, too. Like, even the villain she was working with didn't like her. So as of the more recent comics, she's trapped in the distant past, still very much alive, still very much looking for revenge. Her backstory in the movie might be like a darker twist on Sylvie's backstory, like she was just born a female variant of Professor X and then was eventually pruned and sent to the void where she used her powers to take over. Notice Deadpool put his logo on his guns. They're also on his katanas too. His guns are named Larry and Moe after the Three Stooges and his katanas are named B and Arthur after B. Arthur from Golden Girls. Deadpool is a huge Golden Girls fan. They've had many, many Golden Girls references in the previous Deadpool movies, too. When Deadpool is captured by those rogue X-Men like Pyro, the other characters, Cassandra Nova's X-Men, when he's sitting inside the cave here, having been captured, these teeth here look like they might be the bones of Deadpool Dinosaur from the comics, who is also part of the Deadpool core. There's a bunch of other vehicles and weapons that are Easter eggs for older Fox Marvel movies too, like Fantastic Four X-Men that I didn't point out in my last video. 
One of them is driving the cupcake truck from the Moon Knight series. It's been souped up to make it more tank-like. The other one is Red Skull's car from the first Captain America movie that's been hot-rodded with a giant gun attached to it. Now, the gun looks like it's either from Thanos' ship in Avengers Endgame or one of the Shatari blasters from the first Avengers movie. It might also be one of those special souped-up blasters that Red Skull was making during the original Captain America movie, the Hydra blasters, based on the Tesseract power. And it gets even crazier because the third car we see is actually the Fantastic car from the classic Fantastic Four movie. But here's the thing, it's actually based on a version of the classic one from the comics, not from the classic Fantastic Four movie. This is the original version that debuted in the comics back in the 60s. The Fantastic car in the original Fantastic Four Silver Surfer movie in the early 2000s was a more modern looking design with a Dodge logo on it. What might be happening here is that they're just canonizing some of the classic animated Fantastic Four TV shows with this, but maybe this is based on some unused concept art from the old Fantastic Four movies. Let me know in the comments what you think it is. But part of the idea is the movie is meant to directly set up Avengers Secret Wars, talking more about the actual Secret Wars comic book. And I think part of the idea is that Deadpool either causes or starts learning about the actual incursions, and they basically turn the Void into a version of battle world from the secret wars comics so in a sense deadpool 3 even though it's meant to be sort of like an x-men no way home kind of movie like spider-man no way home with toby Maguire, andrew garfield coming back this time it's x-men fox marvel fantastic four characters coming back the movie's meant to be sort of like a test run for marvel for avengers secret wars with all these characters crossing over battling each other on screen there's a lot, a lot of characters that do not appear in the trailer that we've heard about in the movie, like a lot of cameos. I think they just wanted to show just like a few people like, oh, by the way, here's Pyro. Here's some of the X-Men. Expect to see more of them. Expect to see some Fantastic Four characters. Even though a lot of people saw these masks and they're like, wait a minute, is this meant to be a minion of Doctor Doom? Like, is Doctor Doom actually in the movie? Unless we see some more Easter eggs in future trailers, I don't actually expect to see physical Doctor Doom in this movie. I do think that they're going to try and set him up and there might be some references in the new Fantastic Four movie, though. What they might be doing because they dropped such a big reference in the last trailer is just slowly set the character up in a bigger way so that when they introduce him by the time Secret Wars comes around in a couple of years, people are familiar with him, or at least casual audiences. Last year, there'd been a report when Marvel was firing Jonathan Majors that they'd actually talked at their recent story retreat last year about replacing the Kang character with Doctor Doom. But if you look at the most current version of the Marvel release schedule, this is the Disney release schedule with like all Disney movies, including Marvel stuff. It still lists Avengers 5 as Kang Dynasty coming out May 2026. So it sounds like they still plan on doing a version of Avengers 5 as the Avengers versus the Dynasty of Kangs or the Council of Kangs. It sounds like Marvel's loose plan right now is just recast the Kang character. I'm sure a lot of people will be talking about this for the rest of this year. Most people believe that Marvel is going to wait to like the very last minute before they actually start filming Avengers 5 to actually announce that this has happened. Mostly because there's no benefit in announcing it this early and because they have Deadpool 3, everybody seems pretty jazzed up about that. So they want everyone to focus on Deadpool first, then start dealing with all the Avengers stuff. There were a lot of reports that the main villain of Avengers 6 Secret Wars was going to be the Beyonder or a version of the Beyonder. It could really be anybody, but it just seems so pointed that they actually drop a literal Secret Wars comic book Easter egg at the end of the Deadpool trailer. They wouldn't have done that for no reason if they didn't plan on paying some of that off in the future Avengers movies. The PR people at Disney said that we'd see more Deadpool 3 stuff relatively soon. They didn't say what it would be, but they said there would be more soon. So whatever they wind up releasing, of course, I will do videos for. If there's any Easter eggs in this trailer or the last trailer that you spotted that I didn't talk about in either of my last couple of videos, just write them below in the comments and I'll add them to my future bonus videos. There's a couple other Super Bowl trailer videos that I'm working on. I'll try to post those as fast as possible. Madam Web is also out this week. It is full Morbin time, so I'm allowed to post my review of that, I think, on a Wednesday, like a day before the movie comes out. So it doesn't bode well for the actual movie. Either good or terabad, I will wind up posting that review later this week, so make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. And everyone click here for my last big trailer video for that other alternate trailer and click here to watch Deadpool and Wolverine versus Sabretooth and the other X-Men characters that are coming back during the movie. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.